Richard Utting from Sharpshooting UK here to talk about the K&M Arbor Press with the force indicator on the top. Now we're marketed these huge presses that will um, crush girders and why do we need them? We're just resizing a little piece of brass. What we need in my opinion is a bit of feel um, so that we can uniform, um, so we can be consistent with our neck sizing, our resizing, our seating um, and ascertain um, extremes of brass that uh, we might wish to cull. For example, if you're resizing and, and, and you feel that uh, some are very hard, you know, that there's unevenness, you might think about annealing to standardise the the hardness of the brass, etc. etc. So I've always preferred a smaller um, press rather than a bigger one. And I don't like being tied to the bench. So I have um, always favoured the little Lee hand press. Brilliant thing. You take it wherever you go, take it to the range. You can play about with your seating at the range when you're load developing. It's got plenty of strength, even for bigger cases. I do not see why. Um, a grown man would struggle resizing a piece of brass um, and yet when you hold it against your chest and you squeeze it like that you get really good feedback as to um, what is going on with the brass as I've just said. So I used that for years and what I used to do is I used to take when I was seating I used to take bullets that took a lot more or a lot less force and put them in the plinking pile because I felt, didn't have any proof really, but I felt that um, everything should be the same and that loads that were much harder to seat or much softer to seat um, were, were, would cause some sort of problem with my extreme spread and I, I would put them in the plinking pile. I've kind of taken that a step further. After a conversation with Brian Fox of Fox Firearms, he said he had an Arbor Press from K&M, the neck turning people. And when you seat with this, it gives you a measurement of how much force you are using. So that takes the, the feel of the hand press to, to another level. And I was, I was most interested. It, this all ties in with a piece I've done recently for targetshooter.co.uk magazine, uh, where we try to test empirically whether um, one your rifle may prefer a certain amount of seating tension, which obviously ties in with your um, neck turning and, and how, how much um, tension you're using on, on your bushing dies. And two, whether batching them, uh, batching rounds by seating force reduced your extreme spread. Essentially speaking, the answer was yes. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is running you through this press and how it works. Okay, so it's an arbor press, which means that it presses down. Simple as that. There are others out there. Uh, they're popular because they're portable. And also the dies tend to seat the whole case inside. So you get very, very low run out. For example, this is 204 Ruger. This case that needs seated actually goes inside that like a chamber. And then your bullet, with this the plunger, seats the bullet on top. Now there's not a lot of squirm in that, so um, they're, they're popular. Um, and I, I can see why. They're, they're very, very nice, nicely engineered pieces of kit. So this is an Ellie Wilson die. And these are what you use for arbor presses. Okay, that's 204 Ruger Seater. You can also get neck dies that then um, fit in here, bushings, etc. etc. But today we're talking about seating. So here is the press. On a nice base. Slides up and down according to the height that you need. So that's 204 Ruger. I've been doing 284. You can see that we need to move the whole shebang down a bit because it's not reaching our die. 
Mark 1 Allen key provided with. Slide this down a little bit with these four screws. And then you're set up for, for that die. I need to set this a bit longer for 204 and a bit shorter for the shorter calibers. Nick that up. So now you're operating in the right area. Okay, so. See that we've zeroed our dial here. Okay, so at standstill we have no force. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of runs here and then I'll zoom in. Okay, so here's your handle which is obviously adjustable for length and angle which is a you know, nice touch. Down you come. Oh, I haven't got anything in here so this is uh, essentially a dead stop. And what happens is as you're seating, round goes your dial, you see? So you can ascertain exactly how much force that bullet takes to go in, as you'll see in a second. I really like that because it gives you figures as to what previously, at best, was feel. And on a huge girder crushing press attached to your, uh, to your bench, I don't think that you're going to get anywhere near that level of feedback that you need to, to, uh, to, to work these things out. So this gives you actual evidence. You can even tell with this when nothing else has changed, but you've done another couple of firings of the brass, you can actually tell that the brass is hardening um, and becoming slightly inconsistent, heading towards needing annealing because it takes more or less seating force. You can actually see it. And before you wouldn't be able to feel that. That's just too fine um, a, a variable. Anyway, so I'll just zoom in on this face for you. So as you press down, round goes your dial. Okay, so I will start working with it so that you can see what's happening. So let's get that in there. Okay, so here's our brass, ready to go. Here's our bullet, 40 grain nozzler, such good consistent bullets. Uh, HBN coated, pop that on loosely. Chamfered ready to go. Pop that up into our Wilson die. Base on. And it lined up. Put your seater on. This I have pre-configured with the adjustment in the top. There's a screw in the top that adjusts how far down it goes down um, and it plunges the bullet into the case, which of course uh, um, is how you get your, your seating depth. Um, you can get micrometer adjustable ones. Uh, you get a separate head and uh, there's, a, there's a micrometer on it, but I simply um, I only use this bullet in this caliber, so I simply get it where I want it and um, do up the set screw and, and then, then that's repeatable. So here we go. We're ready to seat the bullet. Here's our dial. I pull the plunger and in it goes. So I'm going to zoom in on the force dial for you. Okay. So... You can see that we start to, it's going in there, 15, there you go. So what tends to happen is it starts to slip in the first bit at a certain number and then it will hit a bit more resistance as more and more of the um, bearing surface goes into the neck and then it takes a little bit more to seat it finally. So I would call that a 1230 bullet in, in, in my head, you know. It started off at 10 or 12 and then it went in at about 30. So we'll see how that carries on now. Out with a bullet, okay, and repeat. These are neck turned, so I think that the tolerances in the neck and the tension thereof should be pretty uniform. Okay, here we go again. 
starting there at 12, we're sliding in. There we go. Stopped at 28. It went beyond that because I'd hit a hard stop, you know, that it was then seated. So when it spikes up, um, you can see that, um, you know, that means that, that, that you're at that hard stop. So that was effectively starting to slide there and then you need a bit more. It's building, 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 building. Then it's in and then boom, you hit the hard stop because you're, you're metal on metal at that point. So that one I would put in exactly the same batch as the previous one, which, which bodes well. And what you're doing if you haven't turned your brass, turned your necks, is you're looking for ones that are, well, your standards are your own, but say we started at 25 and took 60 to seat the next one. I wouldn't be happy with that, and I would want to segregate that in some way. Okay, here we go again. Starting there, it's going in, and we're in there at about 20. So that one was a little bit more, a little bit easier, a little bit easier. I'll put that somewhere separate. Next one. Okay, here we go. Starting there at 12. And we're in at 30. That's lovely. That goes in the normal batch. There's a hell of a lot of brass crack has gone into this brass. So um, I am expecting high standards. If you get normal brass, mix it up with some old brass that you fired a few times and the necks are in a different annealing cycle. You haven't turned them, um, etc, etc. Put them on the die, seat your bullets, and the variations are enormous and it can't be good. Okay, here we go, another one. Starting there. And we're in at 30. Absolutely lovely. So you get the gist. The dial enables you to very finely tune your seating force. Then you can obviously batch and test. That then ties back into which bushing you use in your bushing dies, how much neck tension, um, it, it affects the annealing cycle. It is information that you don't normally have. And as such, at no great expense, this K&M Arbor Press with the appropriate Wilson dies and this force dial on the top is for me now absolutely essential in my reloading and I wish I'd discovered it years ago. So my thanks to Brian Fox at Fox Firearms who stocks them in the UK uh, for his um, advice there. I don't know how much they are. I don't think they're a fortune, maybe a hundred pounds, that neck of the woods, speak to Brian, but um, essential, essential reloading kit, um, it's certainly in the eyes of this reviewer. Okay, there we go. Please subscribe for other reviews and note our new Facebook page, Sharpshooting UK. Thanks very much.